Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a conversation that has been a long time coming. I'm in my uh, first term here in the House of Representatives, and uh, soon after becoming a federal representative, it became very apparent to me that uh, our veterans in California and our district and all across the country really need a lot more of our help as members of Congress, as our staff in our district, and even in D.C. can do for us, for the veterans. You've seen the revelations here lately that have finally taken the attention of the American public with what's been going on in Arizona, previously Pittsburgh with Legionnaire's disease, many other revelations about how poorly our veterans are being treated in this country once they've served for us and have come home and expect the things that they were promised before they made that service for us. For example, revelations about secret waiting lists in the Veterans Administration, as we've seen in Arizona, that have shocked most Americans here in recent weeks. Today, I speak out on an even bigger crisis within the VA system. This, the monumental failure of the Oakland, California Veterans Benefits Administration. Most of our veter veterans must run through this nightmarish gauntlet before they can even hope to be added to the secret waiting list at a Veterans Administration medical facility. Here on the floor, we talk a lot about claims backlogs often, and we've seen mountains of paper files. Our inevitable solution seems to be give them more money to fix the problem. Well, the Congress, with the American taxpayers' dollars, have funded VA pretty adequately. We've made an effort here recently to try and help catch up the backlog with the funding required. We are then issued cheerful responses of decreases in processing times that are systematically manipulated by upper level officials of VA in order to show progress to make us go away. Right now the Oakland office boasts that they have no claims over 125 days old. In reality, tens of thousands at the Oakland VA are trapped in a cycle many, many veterans call delay, deny, and wait till they die. One main trick is to omit key information that would help the veteran in his or her claim, whether it be the exams, timelines, what have you, then deny the claim, ship it off for two or three years worth of review and appeal process, in the meantime we'll deem it processed. The management is more interested in the open number of claim stats on the reports than processing them accurately or in a timely fashion and then reaping bonuses by posting a savings to the government to the taxpayers by denying these claims and these payments. How many veterans are homeless because their claims for benefits have been sitting on a cart or in a janitor's closet or in the hallway by the director's office? for years or even decades, benefits that would help them to not be homeless, to have shelter, to have their health, to even be in a place where they could then seek employment and be in a much better way. How many be veterans have suffered and died waiting years for their claim to be handled so they could seek medical treatment? Some of it need to be very timely to have exams and treatment. How many more veterans have given up hope and committed suicide out of desperation and despair that comes with years of waiting because they don't feel like anybody cares about them anymore and that they don't have any value to our society? Yet, on weekends like we have coming up, we glorify them as we should those that have fallen on Memorial Day and later in the year on Veterans Day. Yet this is what our government does to them. We know that we have veterans that take this ultimate step of suicide. We know they exist. I submit that many of our nation's veterans are part of a backlog that exceeds the most extraordinary numbers we currently have on file. For example, for this past year, my own office has been assisting for the full year 
a veteran with a 36-year-old claim due to management practices, if you call them practices, at the Oakland Regional Office, this veteran still suffers this day from not having his claim properly handled. Remember, he's not even eligible yet after 36 years to make it onto the secret waiting list for medical care, as in Arizona, to then finally graduate to the real list. Hasn't even made that in 36 years yet. The administration mission declares our values are more than just words. They affect outcomes in our daily interactions with veterans and eligible beneficiaries and with each other. Taking the first letter of each word in their code, integrity, commitment, advocacy, respect, excellent, creates a powerful acronym, one that says, I care. That reminds each VA employee of the importance of their role in this department. These core values come together as five promises we make as individuals and as an organization to those we serve, end quote. Now, let me underscore. We know there are many, many very hardworking, caring VA employees out there that want to get results for the veterans. Many of them have been veterans themselves. So this isn't to impugn all of them. This is about upper management on a topic that's been even one the president has focused on this week, not getting the job done and trying to snow us here in the Congress and the American people about the results they've been claiming. Thanks to a growing group of employees who understands these core values I just mentioned and now feel empowered to step forward because they see that there's people that really want to get behind this and get behind them. I've been given a multiple number of uh, signed sworn statements by employees on what is happening behind the curtain at the Oakland Veterans Benefit Administration. Right here on this easel is a statement I received from one of them in the letter. Just one of the few examples. I'll read that for you. I'm an employee of the Veterans Administration Regional Office in Oakland. I took a photo on May 19th, 2014 showing stacks of paper piled on a cart. This paper is actually informal claims going back to the late 90s and 2000s. These claims were not reviewed until November of 2012. These claims continue to this day to be a pile of paper on a cart that no one wants to deal with. I was part of the initial project be review reviewing these claims. My initials are on them from November 2012. Again, this is an em employee from the Oakland Center. Congressman Lamalfa, I want you to know that I am a proud Navy veteran of 10 plus years and look at the opportunity to work at the Veterans Administration as a chance to really help veterans. In the five years, five years I have worked there, I know I have helped people, but there is so much more that could be done. The management at the regional office is concerned about the numbers, not the veterans. Terminal and homeless veterans wait far too long for their help that they need. I believe there are a lot of wonderful employees that truly want to help but are being directed by management to worry about number control. What I don't understand is why they can't be more transparent about the number of claims and the need for more resources. We need more employees to do the job. We don't need new carpet and desks like they just gave us when veterans die waiting for us to do our job. This job has literally made me sick. I go to work knowing that during my day I will have to help the veterans in a low key way and not what I'm being told is needed to get the veterans numbers down. This makes me physically ill. I think about all the letters begging for help and we seem to do so little. I believe Oakland needs new eyes. I believe we need more oversight. I believe far too many veterans die each day while we worry about what our numbers look like. These veterans go home with me each night in my thoughts and regrets of the day because, because we seem to do so little. This is a small sample of what is happening here, and so we have additional statements as well, what's going on inside the Oakland VA, and maybe example across many of them across the country.
And this photograph is the example of the files. Right now, these are waiting in a hallway. Before that, they were found in a broom closet. They'd been stashed for years. Some of these claims go back to the mid-90s, untouched, only recently discovered, yet they still get walked past and, and not handled. Stacks of them, the filing cabinet. The next letter from an Oakland VA employee, a real employee. We're keeping their names back for now because we want people to know that we're going to help them if they come forward with this information. In November 2012, myself and several other individuals were given a special project to work. The project consisted of approximately 14,000 claims dating back to 1994 that had never been worked. These claims were considered informal claims because they had not come in on a prescribed form. Informal claims are worked differently. A letter is sent out with the correct form later for the veteran to fill out, and when the form is returned, the claim is actually open to work. If the form is returned within one year, if the veteran receives compensation, their benefits then would go back to the date of his first correspondence on the informal. We were given these claims to analyze and very quickly we're, we began to realize that these were not all informal claims, but actions, not to mention how old some of them were. So many of the letters that came in were from veterans or their surviving spouses who were begging for help at the end of their life and they never got a reply because they had died by the time we got them. I went home so many nights crying because a veteran or widow had begged for help and we stuck the request in a four drawer lateral cabinet kinda like so with 14,000 other ones. Each day we were required to report, report back to our supervisor on the numbers and how they were broken down. If the veteran had already died it was considered non-actionable and put aside whether it actually made it to the veterans folder is unknown to me. Again, this is an Oakland employee. If it wasn't an informal claim and the claimant was still alive, those were put in another pile to eventually review again and maybe do the letters. If the document received came from a veteran who had already filed a formal claim, then these would be considered actual claims and be reviewed by another person before being acted upon. So each day would report our numbers and separate out the documents. We would begin to speak up about how old these were and why hadn't we acted sooner on them and, were very, and we were very quickly removed from the project for speaking out. These claims were within feet of the assistant service senator manager. She literally walked by them each day and yet they remained untouched until November 2012. Word was that a staff member from VA headquarters had actually been the one to find them while she was there doing an on-site inspection. And several long-term employees have told me that management knew they were there. Either way, either one, most were very old. I don't know how many veterans or spouses died before we responded, but I personally know of several hundreds that got nothing and the thought of us doing nothing to help these men and women in their most desperate times is haunting to me. Again, signed by an Oakland VA employee. A third letter. Addressed to me, Dear Congressman LaMalfa, I cannot thank you enough for the work you and your staff have done. Big credit to my staff who worked very hard on this. For the veterans in the Northern California area, one particular case should have been decided with the evidence on hand last year. I read the examination today and found that the exams have been in the system and there have been no action on that claim for what the system states is waiting for the examinations. The information is there and the rating should be completed based on the evidence on hand. Please keep advocating for the veterans. I cannot thank you enough. I'm a veteran myself 
who served honorably for over nine years and was not provided the benefits from the VA per the law until I, the veteran who is now an Oakland employee, started working for the DVA myself and found out everything I was not informed on. I left the U.S. Marine Corps after serving honorably as a military police canine officer and member of the SWAT team. I worked hard and as a result of my disabilities required several surgeries and recently, due to the hostile work environment at work, have become progressively worse. I have tried to report this to management, but they do not like hearing the truth and started to make my life at work miserable two years ago. The news is starting to pick up on what I have tried myself to report regarding the unethical in the VA. Prior to the news picking up on the real problems of the VA, I have been reporting this information to the Senate, to the Congress members in the Bay Area districts. I have reported this to the VA Office of Inspector General on two different occasions. I have reported this to the GAO. I have reported the problems at the Oakland VA to the Federal Labor Relations Office of General Counsel for two years with no assistance. I have three EO claims with one more in the works that have not been processed by the VA ethically or morally according to the applicable laws up to including the OEDCA in Washington, D.C. I'm begging you to please open a formal investigation into the unethical conduct of the VA Oakland Regional Office. The unethical conduct I know of is the fact that the Oakland VA management has not been held accountable for the misconduct or several felony violations that has recently been reported by me. Since coming out as a whistleblower, I've had many employees discreetly discuss some extremely disturbing information with me regarding what is actually going on in the VA and why the management is trying to stop me at all costs. The unethical conduct goes far beyond my employment difficulties at the Oakland VA Regional Office. I've come to find out that the Oakland Regional Office is not only lying to Congress about their numbers, but the Oakland office is hiding claims that were received in 1999. I have seen these claims in the office as late as May 20, 2014, just two days ago. These claims should be in the claims files if there is not action because a veteran has died in the process, not still sitting around the office for over 15 years. There are a number of claims that are over a year old. There are many more that have been lost in transit to the scan site often in some other state. The VA is ethically challenged, but this is unacceptable to lose a veteran's claim and not tell them or try to make the situation right, just, just ignore them and hope they go away, or to not process a claim properly for over 15 years. This is a real letter from a real Oakland VA employee. The claims have been sitting for over a year after being screened last by a group of VSRs and no action taken because they were sitting in someone's office, then in some storage closet by the director's office on the 17th floor of the Oakland Federal Building. Again, I have made multiple statements to many agencies of the U.S. government in hopes that the illegal and unprofessional conduct from the management would stop, but the parties who I have reported to this, with ample amounts of evidence provided, have explained that the corruption cannot be stopped without some sort of ethical investigation conducted. Please initiate some type of ethical investigation by an agency that is not going to try to cover up what they find, rather report the truth and do the right thing. I have been a law enforcement officer in the U.S. Marine Corps and know what is going on at the Oakland Re Regional Office with me and with other veterans. It is wrong per the law, not my opinion. Please, Congressman Malfa, assist us in whatever you can do. The veterans deserve better. Semper Fi, USMC, disabled. That's what it looks like. Unfinished files. Sitting in a hallway, previously found in a broom closet. Lastly, In letter four here, from yet another person who has stepped forward because they finally see somebody fighting back at different levels here. Our Veterans Committee, our office, other offices around the country that see the shame as being brought upon our veterans and with that, our country. This letter says, 
There are huge amounts of these claims that are quite old, but because they were reclassified, are not worked expeditiously. Lots of these claims go back several years, but they are not being worked as if they are only two or three year olds because they are in a different group, and, that not, and that's not considered a priority. A lot of these claims, the 930 series, are review claims created because we found something wrong that we did. Usually it's not logging in evidence in time before the claim is closed. Let me say that again something happened incorrectly in the VA, not logging in infinite evidence in time before the claim is closed. I personally logged in evidence on May 16, 2014 that was received by a regional office and date stamped August 1, 2013. The claim had been closed months before, but because this evidence had not been logged in, it had also not been considered in the decision, which was a denial of benefits. Incidents like this happen every day. Now we open a review claim, but it will not get work for months and sometimes a year or more. We have veterans that are terminal and asking for aid and attendance, and you would think that these claims, along with the older date of claims in the homeless, would be worked first, but a lot of the time they are not. If the regional office can do several easy claims, like hearing loss, tinnitus, then they will do that because then more claims are taken off the books even though these may not be the veterans with the most need. So there you see, manipulation of statistics, manipulation of timing, making the numbers look better, not making the veterans feel better. I hope that image is one that will stay with you all who have uh, have seen this or will see this all across our country. But something much more needs to be done. Not just pretty words, not just a press conference, not a we'll look into it, not a we'll throw money at it. The Congress does stand prepared to make sure there's adequate funding to do it right, but we also expect the dollars that taxpayers send to the government are used wisely and efficiently, not for bonuses for people that are acting not just ineptly, but I believe corruptly. It's time to stop rewarding this bad behavior with more accountability. Americans seeing these stories, these horror stories, are demanding a fix for the veterans' health care system and their benefits. We almost demand an end to the phony claims, phony numbers, decades of waiting. It isn't just ineptness or miscues or errors. Someone is very deliberate and I think worthy of prosecution as fraud. I thank those VA employees who have been bold enough to step forward and let us know about what's going on in the back rooms, behind the scenes. Good employees that just want to see veterans served all across the country. So we want to hear more of these stories from anybody who might be watching or see this all across the country. Contact your own congressman, contact us, contact whoever and seek remedies that mean something as we celebrate our fallen veterans this weekend it isn't about just um, barbecues and skiing and picnics like that. Let's remember and honor these people. The system is broken, but it doesn't have to be if we're willing to demand accountability and demand it immediately. That's what I'm about, what my office will be about, my staff, but also many of my colleagues that either serve on the Veterans Administration Committee or don't. We will continue to spotlight this and make sure that this story is heard all across the country and those that are doing this to our veterans. These criminal acts ultimately will be held responsible. So thank you to the whistleblowers, those VA employees that do care, 
we know there's many, many of you, and thank you for your effort. God bless our veterans who have suffered and are still waiting, and know that you have allies in this place that will see this through and get you the service you deserve. God bless you all. God bless America. Mr. Speaker, I yield back.